Hey, how's it going, guys? It's been a while since I created any new content. January is pretty bereft of content for me, uh, and that's because I actually got sick, and when I got sick, I lost my voice, and, you know, not being able to speak, I wasn't able to create any new video content, and because of that, I'm very behind on my content creation, so I'm definitely gonna have to increase the uh, video frequency and talk about a lot of subjects that I've been meaning to talk about, so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get into the discussion at hand today, and that's the discussion of finasteride versus dutasteride and the as it relates to fighting male pattern baldness. So if you've seen my channel before, if you've seen any of my videos, then chances are you already know what both of these drugs are and you know that I have a history having used both of these drugs. Uh, however, if you have just uh, stumbled across my videos or if you have been researching uh, uh, treatments for male pattern baldness, what finasteride and dutasteride are is that they are part of a classification of pharmaceuticals known as alpha-5 reductase inhibitors. And what the alpha-5 reductase enzyme is, 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 it's an enzyme that stops the conversion of testosterone into dehydrotestosterone, DHT. And that's, of course, absolutely critical when it comes to fighting male pattern baldness because uh, DHT is responsible for the pathogenesis. It's of male pattern baldness. So suppressing DHT is um, absolutely critical for those who are genetically predisposed to male pattern baldness uh, because, you know, no matter what else you're using, you have to find some way to get the androgens under control on the scalp. Otherwise, inevitably, you're going to lose your hair. So when it comes to these alpha-5 reductase inhibitors, uh, finasteride and dutasteride, uh, they all work pretty similarly, but they work uh, in slightly different ways, which I think is important to cover. And going into how they function differently, let's go ahead and talk about the different types of the alpha-5 reductase enzymes. So alpha-5 reductase is uh, categorized into three different isosomes, uh, type 1, type 2, and type 3. And all three of these will work to stop the conversion of testosterone to DHT. However, it is important to note that these isosomes work on different tissues of the human organism. And that's important because when it comes to fighting male pattern baldness, it's not strictly a linear thing. And what I mean by that, it's not simply an issue of uh, you suppress more serum DHT and therefore you reduce your risk of male pattern baldness. It's actually not quite that simple because these alpha-5 reductase uh, enzymes work on different parts of the human organism. So therefore, if you're suppressing an alpha-5 reductase enzyme that is more active on the prostate than the scalp, then suppressing that alpha-5 reductase enzyme will lower DHT in the prostate. However, that's not too big of a deal if you're trying to uh, fight uh, male pattern baldness. You want to suppress the type of uh, alpha-5 reductase enzyme that's on the scalp. So the two most popular uh, alpha-5 reductase inhibitors that I've already went over are finasteride and dutasteride. Uh, finasteride comes in two different forms. There's Proscar, which is the 5 milligram tablet, uh, which is prescribed for benign prosthetic hyperplasia, and there's also, which is enlarged prostate, and there's also Propecia, which is prescribed for male pattern baldness, uh, and that's a 1 milligram tablet, and that's the standard dosage for male pattern baldness. However, a lot of individuals like myself will actually use Proscar, the 5 milligram tablet, and they will quarter it into four different pieces. And I do that uh, as per my doctor's instructions, of course, and I advise everybody to do the same. And that will give me a roughly standard dosage, about 1.25 milligrams. And um, a lot of people will do that because it's cheaper. I mean, a lot of times uh, um, drug companies or insurance companies will actually not cover uh, Propecia because it's considered like a cosmetic issue. But if you get like a treatment for Proscar, uh, that's uh, prescribed for BPH and that's considered more serious. So a lot of times insurance will cover that and it's a lot more practical. It's a lot cheaper. Uh, for me personally, I only spend about $9 every three months on Proscar. So it's really dirt cheap and that's a lot cheaper than Propecia, which is usually more like $30 uh, a month for me. So from a price standpoint, I find Proscar to be a uh, dramatically superior option. However, what a lot of individuals will also do with, with Propecia is that they'll actually get the Propecia, the one milligram tablet, or they'll get a generic very uh, version of it from uh, some some company like Cipla Pharmaceutical Industries or from like Keeps and they'll quarter it or they'll have it because the thing about uh, Propecia is that even though one milligram is considered the standard dose as prescribed by the FDA, in a lot of countries like Korea, uh, a quarter of a milligram or even some places half a milligram is considered the standard dosage. And that's because uh, finasteride has diminishing returns. So it's been shown that a quarter of a milligram or half a milligram actually suppresses almost as much DHT as the standard one milligram dose. And uh, a lot of people will do that to uh, reduce the risk of side effects. 
However, it's important to note uh, that dutasteride and finasteride are both very well tolerated. They're some of the most prescribed drugs in the world. There's millions of prescriptions. Very, very few people get side effects from these drugs. I mean, there's like some horror stories online from a bunch of people who are mentally ill and are seeking uh, lawsuits uh, against Merck in order to get rich really quickly. But by and large, overwhelmingly, very few people uh, get side effects from these drugs. It's about 2 to 3%, and those side effects do go away with uh, discontinuation. So you don't need to fear using these these drugs, the only thing you should fear is what will happen if you don't use these drugs, and that's going to be male pattern baldness because uh, overwhelmingly these are the best long-term treatments for male pattern baldness, and I have uh, zero regrets using these drugs. However, going into how they uh, they function on the human organism, let's go back into what I was saying about the uh, different isozymes, the different types of the alpha-5 reductase enzymes. So you have type 1, type 2, and type 3. And like I said, these all affect the tissues of the human organism differently. So finasteride only affects the type 2 and type 3 uh, isosome uh, of the alpha-5 reductase uh, inhibitor, uh, enzyme, I should say. However, dutasteride, uh, influences all three. It suppresses all three. So logic would dictate, and a lot of people will jump to the conclusion that dutasteride is better because it suppresses um, more enzymes than uh, finasteride, and therefore it will suppress uh, more DHT. And that's actually true. Studies show that dutasteride does suppress more DHT, about 30% more than finasteride. However, this goes back to what I was saying about how the fight against male pattern baldness, suppressing DHT is more of an algorithmic issue rather than strictly a linear issue. So more is not necessarily better. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at the actual studies as they relate to the suppression of uh, DHT or the suppression of the alpha-5 reduction days enzymes and the different classifications of them the type 1 enzyme actually does not have really much of if any known role on the scalp it, it's actually not even very active on the prostate either so um, type 1's role uh, in the prostate and the scalp is much more obscure. What we know about the type 1 enzyme, though, is that it's uh, more active in the sebaceous gland of the human skin as well as in the liver. So in that regard, it's possible that dutasteride may actually be beneficial for actory, uh, for, for acne, I should say, because uh, the type 1 uh, uh, alpha-5 reductase inhibitor will suppress DHT on the skin. And we know that um, uh, skin... Uh, are the sebaceous gland and the sebaceous glands in the skin are regulated by androgens. So if you can lower DHT activity on the skin, that may be able to reduce sebum production. And if you're reducing sebum production, that means less greasy, less oily skin. So it's possible that uh, dutasteride may actually have a beneficial role in fighting acne. However, it doesn't have any known benefit in um, fighting hair loss in regards to how it combats the type 1 uh, alpha-5 reductase enzyme. Now, the good news is that it also suppresses the type 2, and we do know for a fact, and I have studies to back this up, and I'm going to link all the studies below, that type 2 is the uh, is the type of alpha-5 reductase uh, enzyme that is most active on the scalp. So at its very worst, we know that dutasteride is at least as good as finasteride when it comes to uh, suppressing the type 2 alpha-5 reductase enzyme, so it definitely will help with hair loss. And as far as the type 3 enzyme goes, the type 3 enzyme is a little more obscure. Uh, we know that it's uh, responsible for human maturation. So individuals who are undergoing puberty will need the type 3 enzyme uh, uh, for the production of DHT as a result to uh, maturation. So uh, that's why it's advised for women to avoid uh, even like touching finasteride or dutasteride just because it may actually absorb through the skin and cause like birth defects in women who are pregnant or may not be or, or may become pregnant. And uh, that's also why it's not FDA uh, approved for women. But other than that, uh, the type 3 enzyme doesn't really have any uh, known activity on the scalp. Um, or even the prostate for that matter. Uh, we know the type 2 alpha-5 reductase enzyme is active on the scalp and the prostate. And that's also why it's been shown that finasteride is adequate enough for treating BPH. Uh, dutasteride, even though it suppresses more types of the alpha-5 reductase enzyme, has not been shown to be any better uh, and treating benign prostatic hyperplasia. So even though like overall dutasteride suppresses more DHT, it there's no uh, evidence that it's actually better at fighting male pattern baldness. Now, there are some anecdotes online of people who say that, you know, they used finasteride for a long time and it didn't work as well. So they upgraded to 
due to Tasteride, Avodart, which is the trade name, and they said it worked better. However, it's also important to note that there are people who say that they used to Tasteride and their hair actually got a little bit worse. And I have a theory behind that because what we know about finasteride is that using finasteride is going to suppress DHT. It's going to stop the conversion of testosterone to DHT. And as a result of that, it's actually going to cause a serum increase in testosterone. Now, testosterone doesn't play a huge role in like uh, in male pattern baldness. It's not nearly as bad as DHT, but we do know that people who are genetically sensitive to male pattern baldness, uh, all androgens are going to cause some damage. Now, testosterone isn't nearly as bad as DHT. It's only about one eighth as bad. However, since dutasteride suppresses um, more DHT than finasteride, that means that there's probably going to be more leftover testosterone just flowing, floating around in the human body, including on the scalp. And that could be the reason why some people actually uh, lose a little ground uh, when they uh, switch to dutasteride or when they use dutasteride. Although for most individuals, I wouldn't expect them to lose any progress using finasteride or dutasteride. However, uh, that being said, I think that a lot of people, uh, they uh, tend to overrate dutasteride. They think that it's like significantly better than finasteride, but they just don't understand the, uh, like uh, the, the mechanism of the drugs and the pharmacology. Like, you know, suppressing more DHT isn't going to matter that much if the DHT you're suppressing isn't in the problem area. So you can go ahead and suppress DHT that's going to uh, influence the sebaceous gland, influence the prostate. But really, if you're fighting male pattern baldness, then the only type of DHT you should care about suppressing is DHT on the scalp. And also, I should mention that even though there is evidence that type 1 uh, alpha-5 reductase enzyme does influence DHT on the skin. And we know that DHT uh, is an androgen that helps reg regulate sebaceous gland sebum production. There isn't actually any uh, scientific evidence that dutasteride um, is effective for acne. That's just a conjecture on my part. I mean, maybe it is, maybe, maybe it isn't effective. So if you are suffering from acne, you shouldn't like uh, take dutasteride thinking it's going to help. You should probably take a drug that is actually FDA approved for acne, such as, uh, you know, like uh, like tretinoin or, or uh, you know, uh, just any kind of retinoid. Um, and, uh, you know, just talk to your doctor about it is what I should say. So when it comes to the treatment of male pattern baldness, finasteride is absolutely adequate enough. Uh, you don't necessarily need dutasteride. There's no evidence that dutasteride is any better. I mean, I know there's people who claim it is. I mean, both drugs are definitely going to work. However, I think with dutasteride, there's going to be uh, an increased risk of uh, side effects. And that's not because of lower DHT, but also because if you have a higher testosterone, that's going to increase the risk of aromatization and uh, aromatization to estrogen, I should say. And, you know, that's going to cause problems like, you know, increased water retention, you know, it can cause, uh, you know, some other problems that are associated with estrogen as well. So, you know, like uh, spiking your testosterone more isn't necessarily a good thing. And, you know, there's ways to counter that. You can use like uh, aromatase inhibitors but those are certainly not viable for long-term use. Uh, like a Rimidex is very bad for cholesterol levels, for instance. So you definitely don't have to rely on any of those. So uh, for those who are thinking about starting a... Uh, a long-term treatment for a male pattern baldness, uh, finasteride is absolutely good enough because that is the one that suppresses the type 2 alpha-5 reductase enzyme. And we know that's the one that's most active on the scalp. Uh, you know, dutasteride, sure, it's going to suppress type 1, type 3. It's going to lower more DHT overall, but it's not going to do any more for uh, combating the type 2 alpha-5 reductase enzyme, which we know is more active in the scalp. And there's no evidence that the type 1 or type 3 uh, alpha-5 reductase enzyme is uh, going to do anything beneficial when it comes to fighting uh, male pattern baldness. So yeah, I think, well, dutasteride obviously works, uh, but it's kind of like the equivalent of, uh, you know, fighting a fire with a nuclear bomb. It's just overkill. You don't need it. And dutasteride is typically a lot more expensive. You can't like... Uh, quarter it because it's a soft gel and you know I don't like it anyways you know personally speak I'm, I'm a vegan and I don't like the fact that it's a soft gel because you know that's gelatin and that comes from uh, pig bones and like horse hooves that, that kind of stuff so that's just gross to me so I mean, I've used dutasteride in the past, and personally speaking, even though it worked for me, I didn't notice any benefit over finasteride. I was on dutasteride uh, in, uh, uh, for 
for a long time. In fact, in fact, I used even like 2.5 grams. I mega dosed it. And even using really, really high doses like that, where it suppresses like up to 98% of the, the DHT, I didn't notice any improvement over just the standard one milligram dose of finasteride that I've been on for many, many years. So I think that um, people who are jumping on dutasteride don't really need to. They can just go ahead and use finasteride. But uh, uh, regardless of what you decide to do, uh, just make sure you're doing something to combat the androgens on the scalp. So you're going to need finasteride, dutasteride, if, or if you can't use one of those, for instance, you're going to need to suppress them topically on the scalp and use things like alpha tradiol. You can use uh, RU5841, uh, but don't just rely on minoxidil Rogaine alone. I mean, that's a growth stimulant, but that's not going to be a long-term solution because it's not going to actually do anything to combat the androgens on the scalp. So anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about it to uh, give you the too long, didn't watch version. I think that finasteride is just as good as dutasteride when it comes to fighting male pattern baldness and using dutasteride over finasteride comes with its own series of risks that I don't think are necessary to take. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, I have uh, more content coming. You know, my voice sounds better now. So I have a lot of subjects I want to talk about. And you know, I don't want to create all the videos at once, but I am going to be uploading more frequently. So uh, uh, you guys have my undivided attention and I will try to get to whatever questions or comments you guys have in the comment section. So anyways, hope you guys are having a great day. Take care.